Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. And it's the final week of the season, the final rankings for the year. They have locked in. It's the final time for most players to get any points, especially on the ATP, because we only had one tournament this week. Let's go have a look at the past results. So having a look now at the ATP Finals, the only event on the main calendar, and Novak Djokovic reigns supreme, going undefeated at the ATP Finals, beating Kasper Ruud in the finals, 7-5, 6-3, to lift his sixth trophy at the ATP Finals, which is a record equaling six with Roger Federer now. And of course, we know Djokovic can play the Australian Open, so expect his ranking to rise starting next year. All right, so a recap now of the WTA rankings for the year because, of course, those rankings finished a couple weeks ago now. Fiontech, she finished number one in the world, ahead of Jabir at number two. Pagula finished at three. Garcia was at four. Mind you, that is a career high for all of those ladies, including Garcia, who a few years ago got to number four and regained that spot for the first time in a while. Sabalenka finished the year at number five. Zachary at six. Goff at seven. Kazakina at eight which is a career high for her. Kudamatova at nine, which is also a career high for her. And Simona Halep rounds out the top 10 for this year. Going over to the ATP now, and with the ATP finals coming to an end, this is what the rankings look like. Alcaraz, he finished the year off as number one. He got a big old trophy for it. Year end number one. The youngest year-end number one in the history of tennis. He's also the youngest player to ever be number one in the world, taking that record away from Leighton Hewitt after that US Open win. So Alcaraz starting to create some of his own history already. Nadal, he comes in at number two in the world after winning a couple of slams this year, of course, to start the year. So he's just behind Alcaraz there. And from last week, we have a change in the middle with Rude making the finals of the ATP finals. He goes up to number three in the world. Pushing City Pass down to number four. So Rude, after a, another phenomenal season, he is number three to end the year off. A couple of Grand Slam finals for him and City Pass at number four which is pretty good considering he didn't really perform that well at the slams outside of Australia. But we've got some changes to the bottom half. So Medvedev, he's dropped down two spots to number seven, making way for Djokovic, who's gone up to number five, which is really amazing considering Djokovic didn't play two slams. The one that he won was worth no points. So the fact that he's top five is just ridiculous. And watch out for him, like I said, at the start of next year, because he has so much points that he can make up. He could be world number one very quickly into the new season season. Felix stays in the middle there at number six between Medvedev and Djokovic. Like I said, Medvedev goes down to number seven. Rublev dropped down one to number eight in the world. Fritz stopped there at number nine. We have a change at the bottom as well with Holger Rune dropping down outside the top 10, allowing her catch into the top 10 for another season. And that's because Rune lost a couple of points from this time last year where he would have played either Challengers or Futures events. So he did drop a couple of points and it was enough for her catch to finish the year off at number 10. So that is your top 10 for the end of the 2022 season. And what a season it's been. So there you have it. They are the final rankings of the year and our season finale of the ranking show. And I just want to say thank you everybody for joining us throughout the season. I love doing this series. It's one of my favorite series to do every single week. So I appreciate all the support. And I've hoped you've enjoyed the rankings. It's been crazy off court. We've had Djokovic drama. We've had obviously the Russian drama with Wimbledon not allowing them to play. And then the points not being worth anything. We've had three number ones this year on the men's side. Of course, Barty, she retired at number one in the world, giving Sviantec a chance to take over. And what she's done, I mean, she was on a massive streak for a while there. She's way in front of Jabir. So next year is going to be crazy. But let me know down in the comments below, what has been the craziest thing for you this season when it comes to the rankings? Has it been the fact that sviontek has been on top for so long? Is it the fact that Alcaraz finished the world number one at the end of the year? Is it the fact that Djokovic didn't get to play? Let me know down in the comments below what has been the craziest thing for you in the rankings this year. But there it is. Season 2022 is over and the rankings are done for another year.